What is going on guys? Welcome to your 56th job tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be talking about more about polymorphism and how you can uh, have polymorphic arguments and also return types and a bunch of boring stuff like that. But I'll try to make it a little exciting and maybe I'll tell a funny story. Maybe I won't. I guess you guys are going to have to wait and see. Um, if you've been following my tutorials, the first thing you probably noticed is I made a new class called Fatty. And we're gonna, we need to build this class to demonstrate what Fatty can do to food, tuna, and pot pie. If you haven't guessed, he's going to be eating these classes. Because Fatties love food, tuna, and pot pie. Trust me, I know. First hand. I'm fat. I love them. So we made this Fatty class. Now let's go ahead and make a simple method in here. It's going to do public void digest, which pretty much means eat. And But we can't have eat tuna because eat is already method in here. So we're going to have digest, and as a parameter, it's going to take a food object. So let's go ahead and type food x. And now we can go ahead and do something with that object. Let's tighten that up a bit. That's what she said. So now we're going to pass in a food object. And when we pass in a food object, we're going to take that object, which is now named x, and we're going to call the eat method to that. And bam, that's our, all we're going to do. So, here's what we can do right now. For example, if we had a food object named Bucky, we can pass in the name Bucky, and then it's going to say, all right, whenever we call Bucky.e, it's going to say this food is great. So, whenever we pass in a food object, it's going to call that food method, which is eat right here. But what you didn't know, or maybe you did if you know Java, what you didn't know is anytime you can pass in a food object, you can also pass in objects of a subclass. For example, you can pass in tuna and pot pie. So since this object, or excuse me, this method has the privilege of accepting a food object as its argument, it can also accept any subclasses such as tuna and pot pie. So, oh, what'd you say? You don't believe me? Well, let me just go ahead and prove it right here. Let's go in our main apples method, and let's go ahead and start making some objects. Let's go ahead and make a fatty object, and we'll name it Bucky, because that's me, and I am fat. We'll say uh, equals new fatty with no parameters. So what we did here is we created a fatty object named Bucky. And let's go ahead, and now, once we can use this fatty class, let's go ahead and give us a way to use the food objects. So let's go ahead and create food. We'll create fo for food objects equals new food and why do we need to create a food object because first of all I'll put your semicolons get out of my way box that's what he said and <laughs> uh, I crack myself up sometimes and why did we need to create this object for food well because this um, method takes an argument and that's a food object so that's why so now ahead now let's go ahead and call this with our fatty object which is Bucky because I'm fatty we'll put Bucky dot eat right there and now let's go ahead and as our argument remember or excuse me that's digest isn't it and as our argument for the digest method in our um, Bucky object it takes one food object so we only have this object right here fo so let's go ahead and pass that in and see how it works okay run that baby and it says this food is great wow that food must be great wonder what it is probably double cheeseburgers you fat piece of s oh sorry and anyways now you pretty much know how you can pass in objects in the methods but wait Bucky you said that you can pass um, subclasses in as well well I didn't lie anytime you can pass a food object in as a method as an argument you can also pass the subclasses which are in this case tuna and pot pie so for example we have this fatty digest method that takes a food object as his argument but food also has the subclasses of pot pie and tuna so let's go ahead and make a food uh, let's name it PO equals new food get out of here and bam just like that so not only can we pass in this super class of food object, we can also copy this because we're lazy, and we can also pass in 
this object PO, which would be the pot pie. So let's go ahead and run this, and it'll be new pot pie, like that. And let's run it and see what we got. This food is great, this pot pie is great. So what point am I exactly trying to make? Well, what we did right here is this. We created an object named Bucky so we can use all the stuff in this fatty class right here. And the only thing is, is this digest method. So, you know, we don't have a whole lot to work with here. We also created a new food object because this digest method, it took a food object as its argument. Now, after that, we created a pot pie object. Now, this pot pie object is a subclass of this food superclass. So, anytime this digest method can take a food argument it can also take a tuna or a pot pie argument as well so then I proved that to you guys because I know I'm a liar and I had to prove it to you guys I called that Bucky object with digest is the food object is my argument and I also called the pot pie object is my argument so that is pretty much a way that you can have polymorphic arguments and you can also have polymorphic uh, return types in the same way. So we just went over arguments right here, but you guys can figure out just return um, any other one if you want. So that's that for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys learn. If you didn't, then, you know, I don't know what else to do. Watch the rest of my tutorials, I guess. Oh, disgusting story. I told you guys that I'll tell you. One of my friends... She went to a, uh, well, I don't want to say the name of the restaurant, but she went to a fast food restaurant before, and she got this chicken sandwich, and she bit into it, and it was, like, creamy in the inside, and she's like, oh, cool, like a new cheese on the inside. Must be, like, like a cheese filling or something like that. It tastes like blue cheese or something. Well, anyways, she ended up getting uh, food poisoning, and they found out that in the center of the chicken, it wasn't a filling. It was actually pus in the center of the chicken. So when she bit into it, pus burst out, and she thought it was filling, and she just ate it anyways, and yeah, she got food poisoning. So if you think that's disgusting, leave me a comment, and, <laughs> and if you never want to eat a chicken sandwich again, then I don't blame you. But it wasn't from McDonald's or Wendy's, so you guys are still good to eat there. So in anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed my disgusting story and my tutorial. So uh, I look forward to teaching you some more. So I will see you next time. Oh, by the way, don't forget to subscribe.